Good morning, folks. This seems like a good place to start. This is the list. Global seismic plots witnessing a worldwide blast of L waves when a deep tremor registering magnitude 7.7 .7 struck eastern Russia at a depth of over 600 kilometers. It was a far cry from the deadly shallow quakes in Iran, but enough to affect the entire world. Volcanoes are part of the watch, too. Katla is the big one up here in Iceland and was put back on watch after some minor tremors. We had a 5.4 in Pakistan yesterday, a 5.2 in the South Sandwich Islands, and a 4.3 in Djibouti where Africa meets the Middle East. You remember we had two volcanoes on watch in New Zealand, then the lava rocks in the ocean. They had pegged that source up north, and then remember they take satellite imagery of this area compulsively. Here's an image of what caused that massive blob of pumice floating out there. Taking RSOE around the United States, Galveston, Texas seeing mass fish die off for another day. The Millstone nuke plant halted a reactor because the water was too hot to cool it. Landslides in and around Yellowstone are closing roadways. We have blue-green algae at Dexter Lake in Oregon. Some different poison algae found in Guam, and I'll give you two guesses what kind of weather they don't want any more of down here. But you only need one. We got another typhoon. It's almost unreal. Here's today's Torcon. It's a small area, millions of people affected. Just check it around lunchtime. Cosmic ray charts look normal now. Luckily, Mr. MBB333 caught what they took down. This is from two days ago, and it's tough to say this is data error anymore. While he and I might have some different ideas about what's going on, he's a good guy and he's got some eyes open. And if I may offer something for those who watch the bar toll here, keep track of this chart below. These lines can tell you the exact location of the source within the Cartesian plot of the solar system. Three days ago, these corona holes faced Earth. I told you yesterday we got a front leading density spike from that corona hole stream, kind of like a snowplow bunching up the particles before the faster wind arrives behind it. Let's have a look at an odd trans-equatorial coronal mass ejection. This is mostly a visual splendor. There's not much to worry about really as the cloud is small and will mostly sail north of Earth as you see here on the Enlil spiral. Candy cane corona hole down there on the bottom left, trust me, not so sweet. So looking at our flare and quake watch factors, Patrick Jarrell insists that these two top dates should be August 11th. Looking at what we've had so far, it's really tough to argue with him. I was off by a day. Apologies. We have had an M flare as well during this watch, but it's been days since an active region went off. We technically can't discount these sunspots facing Earth, although it is tough to see an X flare from either of these. Looking at Stereo B with the Earth off to the right from this view, it shows what's coming around next and you see that recurring corona hole, center circle, but no bright active region set to face Earth. I bet this flare watch does give us a big flare, but from those bright regions on the left, which are facing directly away from Earth. We can hope, right? Let's also hope we have seen the last big quake of this watch. That's the news, folks. Be safe.